Okay, so I decided to redo my review of these practice swords here. I first reviewed them a bit more than a year ago. These are made by Red Dragon. It's their Proline Extreme series. And they are associated with Dave Rawlings. So sometimes you see them listed as Rawlings wasters or practice swords. And uh, when looking at these, you may ask yourself, why the heck would you want to practice with plastic swords? You know, historical swordsmanship, plastic swords, how does that work? But they do have some advantages, especially compared to wood. And of course, both wooden and plastic wasters are significantly more affordable than steel. And they also do actually have a couple of advantages over steel. Also disadvantages, of course, but uh, we'll get into that. So uh, first of all, one of the main advantages is they are flexible, which wooden practice swords are not. They are completely rigid, which makes them dangerous in practice. I mean, for full contact sparring, I would outright say forget wooden swords. Another aspect is durability and plastic blades are very good in that regard. I mean, you can bash them together pretty hard. You can use it over prolonged periods of time and they're going to stand up very, very well. Uh, wooden practice swords will break eventually. Uh, I mean, not that steel can't break eventually and especially you know, depending on the quality. But uh, steel also gets pretty chewed up over time with steel on steel contact. You get a lot of nicks and the rough areas on the edges, particularly scratches, that sort of thing. These here hold up really quite well. As long as you only practice against other plastic blades, no problem. There are a few variations to choose from. I have two of the available blades. One is the actually one-handed double-edged blade. There is also a two-handed, which is slightly longer, and the one-handed single-edged. And this here can, as you can see, can be turned into a two-handed sword, you know, kind of a long sword with comparatively short blade. And this is one of the things I really like about these. You can unscrew the pommel and exchange the hilt. So you get several different sword types with the same blade. I can take, for example, this guard and pommel here. Those are made by Purple Heart Armory. Put the grip on, thread the pommel on, the, on there, and then I have basically a Norwegian-type single-edged Viking sword. And uh, there's quite a variety of different hilt components. Another thing I like about these is the thin blade profile. If you compare that to this nylon sword here, should notice it is quite a bit thinner, which is nice. It's a little closer to a steel sword in thickness, but that also comes with a problem. Namely, one of my major complaints about these here is the flexibility. They are definitely overly flexible. And I didn't realize that in my first review because I didn't have enough practice swords to compare to them to. And uh, I mean, I should have noticed that anyway. You see, this is extremely flexible. And the problem with that is it doesn't translate well to a lot of historical techniques. You need a certain rigidity and um, some of the techniques are simply difficult with that amount of flex. Of course, this makes them very safe. I mean, in the thrust, you wouldn't even need too much protective gear. Gorget, of course, it's extremely important, especially for a single-edged sword. This would be very overly flexible. Um, they also have a tendency to take a bit of a set after being flexed. If they do end up permanently warped, it's not difficult to fix, by the way. You just need to heat them up and uh, then press them flat for a couple of hours. So you could, you may even be able to use a hair dryer. I'm not sure if that doesn't work, then a heat gun would definitely work. Of course, the ideal amount of flexibility is debatable. It is a matter of personal preference to an extent. And uh, there, there's also quite a bit of variation in historical steel blades. I mean, you can have anything from a blade that is 
very stiff to the point where you can't even flex it with your hands to a blade that is extremely flexible. In fact, this is almost as flexible as these practice blades. It does, of course, make a difference whether it's steel or plastic, but um, you do have quite a bit of variation. Single-edged blades, however, do normally tend to be pretty stiff. And you also have blades somewhere in between, of course. But the other, in my opinion, more significant problem with these is they are extremely slippery. When there's any kind of blade contact, they slide like crazy to the extent that a lot of historical techniques in the bind simply don't work because they just slide all over the place. Two sharp steel blades will, of course, slide just fine on the flat, but on the edge they bind. Because it is sharp, kind of bites into one another. And this is something that not even blunt steel blades can simulate, of course. Other nylon blades don't slide quite as much. They still do, but at least they don't have this extremely slippery feel. These here, on the other hand, feel pretty much as if they were lubricated. It's... they just slide like crazy. Um, which is not necessarily a problem. It depends on exactly what you're practicing. If you practice, say, German longsword, that would be a problem because there's a lot of blade binds and uh, winding, you pretty much forget about that. If, however, you practice, say, sword and shield and don't have much you know, blade contact to begin with, it's not really much of an issue. And in that regard, the flexibility is also not too much of a problem. So it really depends on your purpose. So what about the realism in terms of weight and balance? Well, they tend to be somewhere around two-thirds of the weight of a real steel sword. And balance-wise, the um, all-plastic version tends to be somewhat blade-heavy, which, uh, depending on the type, is not a problem. Here you can see the blade up close. So there is a steel rod inside for weight and rigidity. There's the profile. It does have a distal taper, which is nice. And the point is slightly thickened here. So you get a safety feature, which is good because towards the point it does get quite thin indeed. Here is the grip. It is also synthetic. Feels like rubber and it has quite a bit of traction. You can see this mainly rounded rectangular grip and it becomes somewhat more round towards the end. There is a profile taper, so good shape. Here's the guard, which has one particular problem I found, namely these slots here. On one occasion I got a blade right in there into my hand and um, they're not necessarily large enough for a fully padded hand so that can be a problem. I, pre I would prefer if this was fully closed. It would definitely give you more protection. So to sum it all up, would I recommend the Red Dragon slash Rawling synthetic practice swords? Well, if those were the only ones on the market of that type, I would because they are definitely a lot better in my opinion than wood but uh, or at least a lot safer but i have since then come across alternatives that i think are better in almost every regard to recap as i mentioned the problems with these are they are way too flexible in my opinion they don't have the right weight and balance at least not quite and yeah you may say well it's just a plastic sword, how can you possibly expect it to have the same weight as a steel sword? But it's possible. This one here, for example, made by Black Fencer, it does weigh the exact same as a steel longsword. It's around 1.6, 1.7-ish, I think. And uh, balance is also pretty accurate, so it is possible. And also in terms of uh, flexibility, these are still flexible enough to be safe enough, there are still some arguments in favor of these. Like, for example, the very thin blade profile is certainly nice. And the price is also a good argument. If you're struggling with a limited budget, this would help 
in two ways. One, they don't cost much in and of themselves. And also, I feel you require a bit less protective gear with these, simply because there is a bit less mass in the blade. They don't hit quite as hard. They do flex more, so they are safer. If you don't have that much blade on blade contact going on in your style, say you're practicing sword and shield, then these work just fine. I don't see any particular problem with that. But if you want to practice, say, German longsword, which does a lot of blade contact, binding and winding and everything, these, in my opinion, simply don't work. They are not appropriate for that. They slide way too much and they are just too flexible. A lot of the techniques don't work very well. So keeping those considerations in mind, these might still work for you, but you know, just so you are aware of the drawbacks. And um, yeah, hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. Happy practice, happy bruises and all that good stuff. I'm just gonna go.